I said at the beginning of the day that today is all about the audacity of the imagination, and here is a woman who personifies that, Dima Ritana. Thank you. Whena tuatahi a mihi ana ki a tātou i harama i te ao Māori ki te whakawhakotu i a tātou whakaro i roto i tēnei minenga. Nā reira, me te aroha hoki ki a tātou e pōkai kahana. So kia ora to you all. And the rest of you, um, if I've got one message for you, start learning Māori tomorrow so I don't have to interpret. <laughs> Anyway, when I look at the crowd here and I'm thinking, what the shivers am I doing here talking to the... It's a bit like bringing coals to Newcastle. However, <clears throat> I think it's not before time that people invested with all the dynamite that you represent shouldn't put it all together and learn to blow what isn't working out of, the, out of our faces. <clears throat> and I'll start off by uh, addressing Willie because I'm one of the ones, Will, that says... Let's get our plan right first, and then the money will come. And I'll say this particularly because my experience has been that where you wait for the money, the money comes and it tells you how to suck eggs. Um, I prefer to, you know, put the plan together and say, right, this is what we're doing, drop the money here. Um, and particularly Tato Māori, as a Māori, I'm very concerned at the moment uh, and that is because being human, what we do is the way we operate is pretty much the same. Like, Fano Ora talked about a billion dollars. Well, I went around and listened to different people, and I was actually stunned, Will, because what I listened to was, oh, we need more money because this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing. Nobody said what we're doing isn't working as well as it might do, and how can we therefore make it work better? And then the money becomes meaningful because if we're going to invest... And what we did yesterday, what ain't working, what's the point of more money to continue working with what isn't uh, getting the results? That's the first thing. So that was Fano Order, and I, I think it's the most wonderful program out, but a different set of skills are needed to drive it. Secondly, we've got Pai Pai Ora, uh, Matuhuk, Matuhuk, uh, Pai Pai Motuhake Māori, which is another one that talks about, first of all, it talks about 200 million, so we all got excited. Then it all of a sudden became 600 million. Well, today it's no million uh, because, you know, honestly, um, because what happens, everybody starts to position themselves and make the case. And the government is constantly under siege by all of us who think we have the magic answer how, how to do things. Um, and so I'm going to get on to the Families Commission and the Whānau, um, and the Whānau concept here. Um, I, my experience, and it's my experience, and you've all, we've all had experiences, is that if you want to change anything... You go to the people whose lives you're trying to change. It's what I call, it's, and I wrote a paper called The Fix-It Mentality, because um, globally as well as nationally, everybody's into this fix-it mode. They're going to fix this, education. Blimey, look what comes out at the end of the shoot. We're going to fix health. We've got whānau order, picky order, all the orders, and I don't know why we're so sick. <laughs> so that's another thing, investing in in fixing ourselves and we get worse. Crime is the same thing. So it behoves us, folks, to come at it from a different point, to look at, I don't want to be fixing families, thank you. I want families to fix themselves. But we, we actually disable them, and it's my, my, my term that I said, we have to look at whether we're enabling or disabling. The other thing is, for those of us who run organisations, and the kohanga reo is no exception, is that are we actually... Um, strengthening families or are we taking over and telling them how to do it and um, we, we started off well with Kohanga because we said we've got to go to the families, they are the ones now we, we didn't have the, uh, the monopoly on family development the Maori Women's Welfare League in 1951 years, oh, sorry, years ago <laughs> years ago focused on families with Dame Fina and, and so that's where it went in 1951. 30 years later, along comes Kohanga with its focus on families. And I want to tell you here um, the, the borax I got about going to families. Because people came and said, you know, early childhood is this. I said, it's not early childhood, sorry, sorry. It's a Maori development initiative. But because the government funded it, they only knew how to fund an early childhood um, movement. Early childhood's wonderful. I have got no qualms with it. But so is Kohanga. Don't make us what we aren't. Because, can I just, and I'll, I'll just go quickly through this because 
I'm known to speak for three hours, and I've only got three minutes. So um, my concern, let's, let's focus in on families in Kohanga. I went and said we're going to the families. I got criticism from all sorts of agencies, but, but sadly from Maori themselves, especially the Maoris in the academic institutions who thought they had the, the uh, high ground on a Maori language. Might have known about the grammar, and they might have known about the glottal stop and the macron and all the rest of it, but they didn't know too much about how to motivate families to get them to take, to, to, want, to, to, to want to satisfy their own needs. And so, no, go, don't go to families because stupid, they don't know how to manage. Why well, should they manage to have the kids without you? <laughs> they manage to go to bed and get up in the morning without you. They manage to do this, go down and buy their bread. You might, we, mightn't think, we might think there's another level of management, but you go in to grow the management skills, to grow the families and the respondents, not to take it away from them. And some of us are into sort of self-interest, self-edification, and all the other self-things that don't work very well at times. So all I'm saying is that I'm, I'm absolutely um, moved to see the people who are here. All of us. All of us have done our bit, and we're working hard. But like I say... People said to me, how did, how did you move Kohanga? I mean, in fact, David Longy asked me, he said, what magic did you use to move Kohanga around the country? I said, I didn't damn well move it. The families did. And if you want to change something, you get a critical mass who want it and will do it. That's what c gets changed. Not me going to have a fight with the minister and not someone else because the government's under siege from all of us. They don't know which side's up by the time they, you know, confronted with all of us. This one's got the magic bullet and that one's got the magic bullet and somebody else and the poor old government, you know, uh, uh, they haven't got any bullets at all that work. So, God bless them. But anyway, what I'm saying, <laughs> they try like all of us. We all try. But... Why I, I'm going to finish this because you're talking about much of what I would want to talk about anyway. What I want to say is um, I, I believe that we've got to move from a fix-it mentality to, a, to touching those families in a way that gives them dignity, gives them purpose, gives them hope. We all have the skills in this room to do that. We need to ask the question, are we? Are we? Because I think when you dig down, although there's a lot of questions, we mean well, we work hard, and at the end of the day, we have to ask billions of dollars going in to enable you and me to do whatever the hell we're doing, but we're not actually touching the lives of those families who can, there is... Uh, who can? Someone said to me, oh, God, you mean to tell me you expect us to go to family where there's child abuse and where there's p uh, p um, drugs and where there's this and that? I said, yes, I am asking you. But don't go if you don't know how to go in there. Don't go because the set of skills and the tools you need to get through those doors are critical. You get through the door, you don't go in there and say, I've come to fix you because they'll tell you, you know, where you need to go. But you go and say, I've come for a cup of tea, and Jesus, you know, I'm da -da -da and I need your help. And, and I can tell the story because I've been there. And watch the people turn around. I've seen gangs turn around. I've seen families on their knees. And my final story, because it will have a, have a, a message probably that we're all concerned.